Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the Data Art series of webinars on trends, technology, and thought leadership. Today's webinar, titled AI, ML, and Big Data for Travel and Hospitality, will focus on AI, ML, technology solution, a flexible data preparation system, and examples of implementing it in travel. Let me introduce our esteemed speakers, Vlad Besmerkny, Artificial Intelligence Consultant, Leader of Financial AI at DataArt. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here. Thank you, Vlad. Dmitry Baikov, Senior ML Engineer and Data Scientist at DataArt. Hello. Glad to be here. Stan Boyer, Expert in Airline, Travel, and IT, Senior Advisor at DataArt. Hi, everybody. Welcome, and uh, great to be here. Andrew Sanders, VP Travel, Transportation, and Hospitality at DataArt. Thank you, Max. Appreciate you having me here, and hello, everyone. All right, so let's get this started. So please, um, technology experts, uh, speak to the artificial intelligence machine learning solution, flexible data preparation system. And Vlad and Dmitry, the floor is yours. Thank you, Max. Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about our AutoML solution. Uh, first of all, a few words about the background of the solution. Uh, as we all know, uh, each IT software project in each company generates lots of data about clients, about transactions, and so on. Those are many related data tables. Dealing with huge amounts of data is challenging, especially in machine learning projects. Uh, for such projects, uh, the required steps are data preparation, data sets merging, and feature engineering. To automate these steps, we created our own AutoML solution, and we would like to tell you about the solution today. Uh, so let me tell you how we started this solution. Everything has started from uh, Kaggle competition. Uh, Kaggle competition is uh, the um, world leading uh, platform for the data scientists. Uh, it offers uh, open data sets uh, from real life that uh, every data science team can try. Uh, and we've started from uh, home credit uh, competition. Uh, home Credit is an organization that provides uh, loans to their clients and they provide uh, these credit products based on customers' uh, reliability. Uh, they use many alternative data sources to predict uh, their clients' payment abilities. Uh, the task for this competition was to define the classes of customers, reliable versus non-reliable. The evaluation of the competition was done uh, based on uh, so-called ROC AUC metric, which basically shows that model uh, properly predicts both classes, reliable and non-reliable. Uh, let's go next. Uh, there were a few challenges in this competition. Uh, so first of all, it was pretty crowded. Uh, 7,000, more than 7,000 teams uh, participated in competition. It included seven related data sets. Uh, you can observe the structure of the data sets uh, on the image. Uh, there are multiple tables uh, with uh, a few relations between each of them. And also the data sets were highly imbalanced. Uh, the uh, customers classes uh, for reliable for for reliable class there were 90 percent of entries and for non-reliable uh, only 10 percent which also which always uh, is a challenge for uh, machine learning algorithms uh, so how we approached uh, the Kaggle competition uh, I'm uh, asking uh, Dmitri to continue from here Thank you, Vlad. So, uh, as we already mentioned today, the data uh, had seven different related data tables, and we should uh, predict customer reliability based on this data. All of these data tables has some information about customer being reliable and non-reliable, 
But the interesting thing here is that we can just put all these seven data sets and build ML model from it. We should make some aggregations. We should uh, extract some new features or predictors. And this step might be not really straightforward for it. So based on that, we started with our baseline and we built uh, our basic part as we can see on the next slide. We started from building the basic pipeline. We manually merged all these seven data sets. We did some feature engineering, data cleaning, removed outliers, generate some features. So we made these aggregations and merging step manually by hand with our data scientists efforts. Then we built the baseline models, conducted a couple of experiments, tried different model architectures. So selected the best model and made cross validation. So after all these uh, steps, uh, we uh, got our AUC metric 0.77. And after some model optimizations, we got even higher up to uh, 0 0.78, which was not bad result uh, in top 30% on Kaggle on this competition platform. And uh, on average, this pipeline took from 10 to 15 days and we uh, were somewhere in this date range. But we didn't stop here. We knew that we could do even better. And we introduced our AutoML pipeline, which has only one manual required manual step here. So as you see in the bottom, we have our data and relations uh, step, which where we define relations between the data sets. We put all the data sets into our tool. We define our target, which is customer reliability uh, in current case. Then we have these four advanced uh, steps, which are fully automatical. On the first step of advanced feature engineering, we explore millions of new features. Uh, we explore the big space of possible variations, how to merge and combine these data sets. We compute this in parallel on the clouds. Then we made a step of feature selection, where we select the best features for our target uh, from this huge amount of features. We use some supervised and statistical methods for it. Then we made a uh, model selection stage. We again cross-validated our results and we got IUC metric 0 0.784, which was even higher than the last stage of our previous basic pipeline. Again, we didn't stop here. We made some model optimizations. We moved it even higher up to 0 0.797. And this gave us top 3% on Kaggle. This whole pipeline was more than five times faster than our manual pipeline. And again, we didn't stop here. We knew that there is another optional step, uh, which is data scientist involvement. And we involved a data scientist to build manual feature manual features and optimize model once again. And we got our AUC metric more than 0 0.8. And this gives us a top 0.6% on Kaggle, which is really, really great uh, in uh, like three to five days. On the next slides, I would like to summarize our competition summary. So the highest score across all the teams in competition was uh, 0 0.8. 8.05, and our best score, score was 0 0.8, which is uh, pretty much close. So with only automatic pipeline, we got to the 215th place from more than 7,000 teams, which is top 3%. And with data scientist involvement, we got to top 0.6%, which is 42nd place in Kaggle. And Kaggle has its uh, models, uh, structure and you can see that for competitions for uh, more than 1000 teams uh, we got in top five and we got silver medal so we are here with automatically fully automatic pipeline i would like to outline the key challenges and features of our LTML solution so the first challenge is that important features may be missed with aggregating and merging all these data sets, but we explored more than 1 million and 300,000 features, and we got the best ones, uh, which is 4,200 features. So we decreased the number of features more than two, 300 times 
which is really wonderful in fully automatic way. We removed all noisy and unimportant features for our current target, but it is not uh, fixed for one target. We can put other targets like for instance, we don't need to predict only customers' reliability. We can try to predict customer churn rate and just reset our pipeline, put uh, the different targets and rebuild whole different best features to predict this uh, new target in fully automatic way. I'd like to pass back to Vlad uh, to outline even more features. Thank you, Dmitry. Uh, yeah, there are a couple of uh, other challenges and features that overcome those challenges. So one of the most common challenges is that the descriptions of features are hidden in code. So they are known for a technical team, but they're hidden from business. And in our solution, we use feature definitions that explain how features were generated, how they were gathered from different tables, which aggregations were applied to them. Uh, the second important uh, feature uh, is about running uh, the pipeline in iterations and in parallel. So usually the challenge is that feature generation requires uh, huge computation resources. And as we run uh, advanced feature engineering in iterations and in parallel, we can spread the load into smaller machines, into clusters. We actually can run on a single machine just it will take a bit longer or do the parallel work on few machines. Uh, also, this is a common issue known for data scientists. Local trails are usually limited by the power of local working stations, local computers, and by the volumes of data. Uh, but for AutoML pipeline, we develop a simple configuration that can uh, select the running mode. So you can do a smaller uh, trial on your local machine, then just change a flag and do the same in cluster. Uh, so let's uh, wrap up uh, the key advantages of our uh, AutoML solution. Uh, first of all, that's an advanced starting point for data scientists. Uh, as in our example, we've got pretty cool result even in automated mode. So we had to spend less time to figure out more um, cool features uh, just to get uh, even better results. And for time saving, that's something that uh, Dmitry illustrated, like in usual basic manual pipeline, it may take up to three times longer than in our automated pipeline. Our solution is focused on multi-relational data tables. And this is the most common case uh, for any uh, real life uh, ML project. Our solution is scalable. Uh, it can run in parallel uh, and in iterations. And also it's cloud agnostic, which means that you can run it on different cloud providers like GCP, AWS, Azure, or even on-prem. And also our uh, solution is not specific for a domain. It's suitable for, for the task in travel and hospitality, finance, insurance, and other uh, industries. And let's take a look once again on the diagram that we showed you at the beginning. So as you remember, the starting point is lots of tables with many relations. And there was a question how to combine them to a single data set with new features that are useful for ML models. And the answer is advanced feature engineering in our AutoML pipeline. So when the features are combined, they can be easily uh, supplied to ML algorithms. And those algorithms can provide uh, really useful outputs in different manners. So it can be customer classification, like in our example. It can be similarity and analysis uh, recommendations for customers, risk analysis, fraud detection, and many more. And this all is about uh, it, it, this. This all steps are covered by uh, our AutoML solution. And now, uh, Stan, the floor is yours. Please tell us more about the use cases. Great. So, uh, thank you very much, Vlad. 
So today we're going to go over two use cases, one from uh, general travel and uh, involving uh, air search and vacation planning, and then one from hospitality. So in the initial search, obviously there, you'll have a very limited set of things that you're looking at when you first come to an OTA website. And so in this example, uh, taken from one of the big online travel agencies, you can see there's, in order to simplify the screen, there is an origin, a destination, and some dates. And there's also the type of travel that you wanna do. So whether that's flights, cars, packages, uh, one way, round trip, things like that. And so when uh, you enter your data, if you think about the relational tables that uh, Vlad and Dimitri were talking about, it's possible to cross-reference those back uh, to bring back and understand who this user is, even if they're unknown to you. Obviously, if you log in, there's more data that can be used. But for this example, we'll just assume that the customer has not logged in yet. And then other data that may be useful is when you select the number of travelers. So who is traveling at this particular time? So is it two adults? Is it some adults with children? Do the children fit within certain age groups? That may then affect what the uh, auto ML is capable of bringing back for you in terms of recommendations. Then, uh, you'll see here that the user has an opportunity to select whether it's economy, premium economy, business, and so forth. And that then would tie back to some of the tables that talk about traveler spend and uh, potentially income level and uh, willingness to spend in the future. So all of that from the initial search page on the site can be used. So if I think about the travel planning timeline, so usually there's the research, right? Where you're out at Google, travel sites, YouTube, uh, then the initial purchase, which we just looked at, right? When you're starting to look at it. And for that, you'd be using different travel sites and potentially airline sites. And then uh, you have, after you've selected and booked your travel, then you have your travel start date. And so in between there is something that I call the idle space. And that idle space can be anywhere from two weeks to a couple of months for that travel to occur. And so travel suppliers today are not really good at uh, knowing what to do in that idle space, whether it's offers or conversation with the customer. And so what you really want to attempt to do during this idle space is begin what I call a trusted conversation uh, with your traveler. And so um, it's typical that rarely anyone chooses everything that they're going to use on their trip in their first uh, travel experience. Let me go back one here. Pardon me. There we go. And, and so once they've made their initial general purchase, so their, their air, their hotel, and if they're going to use a rental car, right, a lot of times passes. And so the traveler is less likely to return to the uh, travel website. And so that makes it difficult for the providers of travel uh, to entice the customer and engage the customer during that idle space. So you'll see here an example from one of the online travel sites where uh, somebody traveling to Orlando and you look at the number of opportunities, number of options there are for a customer to choose from. And, and while this site does a really good job at allowing you to filter and, uh, and select different options, it's still dependent on the user coming back to the travel site. And so using the auto ML, you could bypass that and begin this conversation by contacting the customer with uh, relevant offers and timely offers for that particular customer. The other challenge that you have is that based on that information, 
the traveler is not, uh, they are wary of the uh, travel provider uh, trying to market too much to them. And so you have to be able to build that trust in this instance. And so using the ML capabilities, one of the things that you can do is perhaps link to uh, what Vlad and Dimitri call unstructured data. So for example, travelers are interested in knowing what are real traveler experiences out in the marketplace, right? They don't necessarily want to know. Uh, they're, they're wary of written things, but, but a good source of, of traveler information is something like a YouTube video. And so in speaking with Vlad and Dimitri, it would be possible to take that unstructured data, analyze it, curate it, and get it into uh, a set of features that would then allow you uh, to offer up uh, real world experiences to the traveler. And so what you see down below is just kind of the traveler selection process for things other than their main travel that they're selecting. So, you know, for attractions, they may take two weeks to two months, uh, other things to do, right? So say that you are taking children with you and the children, you know, they're going to be worn out after a day at one of the big theme parks. You might want to do something more low key. Uh, typically, those things would be uh, selected one to two weeks out. Uh, items to pack for the destination and things they may have forgotten. Typically, something that uh, uh, travel sites don't engage in at all, but something that would be very uh, useful uh, to the traveler. And then, of course, meals, especially for locations where reservations are required. And so you can imagine as a parent, traveling with uh, children. Uh, some days they're hungry, some days they're not. And so uh, this helps you gauge uh, when um, kind of a meal planning exercise one to two weeks prior to the trip and then any other meals that might occur during the trip. Uh, and so the auto ML allows you to rapidly create uh, relevant and timely offers in order to get those to the traveler. And with that, I will turn it over to Andrew, who's gonna give us an example from hospitality. That's great, Stan, thank you so much. Um, hospitality is, is all about great service. Um, so how does a traditionally high touch people-oriented sector like this reconcile a seemingly huge paradigm shift uh, towards um, automation like AI and ML without losing some of the basics normally associated with great service, uh, often correlated to great personal experiences and interaction with, with wonderful people. Our view is uh, of how each organization uh, deals with innovation is that it very much depends on their viewpoint. Um, we see hugely different approaches between the three areas of hotel groups and chains, uh, individual hotel operators, and suppliers of hospitality-related technology. For instance, the data goals of the brands or relatively small number of chains often don't align with the goals or needs of the tens of thousands of unit operators. This means the drive for automation is really in the hands of an exceptionally small group, i.e. the global hotel chains. However, many hundreds of technology vendors are all competing to produce the most innovative software products. And this is where we see the most interesting activity. Now, there are major hurdles to overcome in order to execute a strategy around AI, ML, and data management. A little over a decade ago, the term luxury hotel was almost defined as a place where guests could go and enjoy things and have, um, and have facilities and technology in their room that they generally didn't have at home, like a big screen TV, jacuzzi, IoT technology like powered drapes and blinds, and more recently, voice control and interaction. Now, with guests having great technologies like this, or even better at home, the tables have turned, and ingenious ideas for offering better service now often means having better technology behind the scenes to proactively anticipate what the guest wants, plus being responsive to their changing needs. A point on high-touch versus high-tech, I'm not going to share a vision of a completely staff-free hotel experience. 
But for hoteliers out there, I think guests want more and more human interaction. Most surveys say guests these days want a self-service option if finding the answer is easy. As soon as there's any friction whatsoever, guests want to interact with the person. Great experiences are going to be increasingly defined as seamless and easy interaction with all touch points on the guest's terms. So in spite of some things changing out of necessity due to COVID over the past 18 months, people still want to deal with people, except when they don't. Development of systems that are proactively helping guests in the background without the guest really knowing is a quiet but growing trend. Another issue we see is the worry over making the wrong investments. This can be addressed by modern product development techniques that deliver really great proof of concepts or prototypes that can be trialed with people and other systems to prove that they're both useful and feasible. This significantly helps reduce risk of project failure on a number of levels. And finally, how do you execute? Modern approaches call for agile working methods, fast incremental improvements to products, clear scope, and tight ring fencing of projects. We are big advocates of tight project management to constantly optimize between scope, creep, and time to market objectives. Anticipating and delivering against customer needs obviously drives up satisfaction. But interaction with guests in all forms also creates bonds with the, with the customer that helps them engage more with a hospitality operator. Together, Satisfaction and engagement, along with quality and consistency, are the key components in driving repeat guests and revenue. Making it easier for guests to engage is where AI and ML can really come in. For instance, in front of house terms, Marriott Hotels has partnered with Alibaba to ease the check-in process using facial recognition and is being used today in China. Ballara and Angie by Nomadics are delivering AI-powered voice interaction for guests in room while Ivy by GoMoment is one of the leading AI-based concierge systems. Radisson Blue is using AI to give directions, offer advice, handle complaints, and order room service with their AI-powered chatbot. Loyalty systems and CRMs capture vast quantities of data and need a big data approach to provide meaningful analysis. Behind the scenes, Back-of-house systems have been used for many years in the form of rate or yield management systems from companies like Ideas. Systems like these use ML techniques to crunch data and predict likely demand, while TravelZoo matches past travel interests and bookings with likely future preferences to curate and provide highly targeted offers. Opti and NoCross are companies that are both helping hotel operators reduce staffing, maintenance, and operational costs by optimizing deployment of hourly paid staff in hotels. Hotel group Dorchester Collection is using AI to mine data from collected surveys and online reviews. They're using using AI to trawl through masses of data to draw conclusions about performance. Finally, TrustEU detects 7 million guest sentiments every day to help hotels manage their online reputation. However, I'd be remiss not to say but the number one machine learning initiative in its hospitality is recommendation search engines, OTAs like Expedia that, that, that Stan discussed, that capture vast quantities of data to provide best pricing for hotel stays and flights. So where is this all going and how can you keep ahead of the pack? Trends that we see are convergence of voice and screen and mobile-based interaction, increased use of resourcing systems, such as those that optimize use of staffing and energy, improved personalized targeted offers, and big data being used to stop cybercrime. So what should the industry be doing? Well, if you decide that you are an innovator and want to keep ahead, you could do worse than adopt an Amazon tactic of demanding that each department ask itself, how will we utilize machine learning this year in their annual business plans? Develop a roadmap based on your organization's capabilities, maturity, and objectives, and make sure it's realistic. And finally, challenge your internal teams and vendors to come up with innovative approaches to making big data, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, usable and profitable. Artificial intelligence and machine learning consumes data in large quantities, 
but your people will make the difference in helping monetize this, maintaining the human face, and making sure that high touch plus high tech equals improved profit. Thank you very much. So what are the limitations of application of this technology? In general, artificial intelligence and machine learning technology in travel. I suspect the question here is relating to what the limitations are in terms of applying this in realistic terms to travel and hospitality. Um, if that's the case, uh, Max, um, Stan, while I'm uh, <laughs> developing the answer, I would say that um, really the limitation is only limited by the appetite for uh, uh, an operative technology combined with the capabilities of the vendors. So in my presentation, I tried to draw the line between technology vendors and operators, operators being users of technologies. Um, and I think there that the, the capabilities that are only as deep as the vendors' uh, imaginations, so uh, as well as the um, operators' uh, uh, willingness and ability to invest in technology. Um, ultimately, investment and development of ideas like this are not easy. Um, there's not necessarily a quick ROI. That's why I propounded the idea of prototyping and proof of concepts to take a small bite-sized chunk initially to, uh, to, to uh, understand what the ROI could be on each of these projects. So I think that the capabilities are huge. The uh, inertia or the lack of um, uh, pace that sometimes we see in hospitality and a little bit less so in travel is only there as a function of uh, um, a reluctance to start or a reluctance to invest money to start or a an, lack of understanding as to how uh, AI and ML can really produce an ROI. So I would think that that is it's a business problem rather than a technical problem in essence, Max, I think. Thank you so much. I would add a couple of points on technical uh, problems. Um, of course, the lack of methodology, like if you have lots of data, then how to start? From from what point? What are the first steps? What POCs need to be created? These are the challenges, and we uh, address it by our methodology and by the clear structure of our pipeline. And also, uh, another challenge is just the fact that there are lots of data, and it's hard to figure out how to combine it. That's another challenge that is uh, addressed by our solution. And, and I would also add to that, that the ability then to, once you do get that solved, to tie that into the operational applications, which have to serve it up uh, in a real-time environment uh, in order to uh, affect an outcome. And so that's going to vary uh, by each operator, as Andrew called out, and the technology suppliers that they use for their day-to-day -day operations. I'd like also to add that uh, the tools like our AutoML can speed up rapidly all developments of uh, machine learning uh, projects, and you can just be more flexible and spend more time on thinking of what to do, uh, but not doing it. So this speed up may be also crucial to make more experiments, try different approaches, solutions, and uh, be more flexible. Uh, with such tools in machine learning. Thank you, everybody. Um, again, um, another question. Um, if hotel chain has small or relatively small sets of data, uh, if, uh, if there is any chance to use, um, still use ML technology? The answer is yes. Like, uh, it's a good starting point. You have some your data. You can add industry data. You can add non-structured data that Stan mentioned. And also it's all relative, like what's enough and not enough. It was trying. I mean, a few thousand records may be enough to get a baseline model and, and get some useful insights from it. I, th okay. I think that it all comes all comes down to what the what the need is. So, obviously, if you're trying to build a rate management system, you wouldn't you know need a lot more than a thousand records. But if you're trying to build 
um, something to do with local attractions or local um, advice or guidance with a repetitive question coming from a, from a customer, um, where's the best place to go to get certain type of food, then that type of thing could be could be very actionable in the, in this in this way. So it really comes down to what the business uh, what the business need is. Thank you. Um, another question: uh, What is the point to? What was the starting point for application of AI and ML? So we we should start uh, big, or uh, what's uh, what was the actual starting point for implementation of such a solution? So a good starting point is definition of your objectives, but uh, have a couple of them, and starting. Trying, trying in, in, in small chunks, doing POCs, uh, taking parts of data, uh, leveraging some basic algorithms, see their metrics, compare them. So do experiments, continue them, and then select the most promising, and then focus to move them into production. This is the phase at which projects get gets bigger, uh, but start small, have few business objectives and try many experiments to see what is the best, what are the best solutions for you. All right, and I would agree with Vlad on that. For a small hotelier, let's take the small hotelier example that may not have a lot of information and operationally, they may not have a high level of concierge services or things like that, but but using this, if their objective is to increase revenue, say they have an in-house restaurant. So if the, uh, if the goal is to increase revenue in that restaurant, that's one goal. If, the, if uh, a slightly different goal is to increase satisfaction and recommendations by customers to your hotel, that's a very different goal. And so you may approach it two different ways, but uh, speaking back to uh, the concept of industry data, right? It's possible to input data for many restaurants in your area uh, and uh, the types of ratings and foods and things like that, and pull that in and combine it with the information that you have about your restaurant in order to make recommendations to the customer for their meals. So if they're staying one night, two nights, three nights, what are their best options uh, for that? And so depending on your objective, uh, you could focus on increasing revenue, you could focus on customer satisfaction, uh, and in the end, you may end up doing both. I'd also like to add, uh, I agree with everyone and about business objectives. Uh, what If you don't know what business obje objectives you can uh, title to uh, AIML, you can just watch what is already working, for instance, recommendation systems or like some revenue predictions. Just see how a uh, whole industry behaves and what is already in production and start thinking from these uh, things that will most probably work and then try to improve them and uh, do some research in other stuff, which is on, on the edge of uh, research in ML, for instance. Okay. And the final question we've got, uh, what are the considerations uh, between buy versus build uh, when uh, coming to an AI ML solution? The biggest challenge is, data, is the fact that data structures are very specific for each company. So it means that some custom approach is still required. Like you need to prepare data, you need to figure out your structure, not the, the industry recognized structure, not the structure of other company. You need to, to deal with your data. So that makes me uh, believe that uh, custom solutions are more powerful uh, to get better results. Any other opinions before we close? All right. So, uh, Thank you so very much, um, Stan, Andrew, Vlad, Dimitri. Um, thank you so much for the insightful presentation. Uh, for everybody attended, 
Thank you so much for joining us today. And we we'll look forward to seeing you our, uh, on our future events. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye now. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.